For starters, I have to say I cannot and will not give my name. When I began working at the site I'm currently at, I was forced to sign an NDA. It was very detailed and clearly laid out the punishments for talking about the site. They will erase me from existence, but the world needs to know these places and things do exist. A little backstory. I didn't always work as a CO at a secret government black site. I used to be just a normal officer, like thousands all over the country. That was until one day. I used to work at one of the largest prisons on the East Coast, and one afternoon we had a, we had a particularly violent riot on sea tier. Several inmates and a few officers died in the riot. After we regained control of the tier and were finished cleaning up the blood and bodies, a major from over in our administration wing came down to talk to me. He said he was watching the CCTV footage of the riot and was very impressed with how calm and collected I appeared to be during the whole incident. I thanked him and assumed our conversation was over and went to leave. Right then, he grabbed my arm and said, Wait, I have a job opportunity for someone like you. Naturally, I was curious, so I agreed to the promotion he was offering me. I was instructed to report to an address and to tell no one. Don't speak about my new assignment. As far as anyone is to know, I've been relocated to HR in an off-site location as a result of PTSD from the night of the riot. I do as I'm told, and report to the address given to me in my new uniform. The uniform, by the way, is very nondescript. It's meant to blend in with civilian clothing and not raise any unwanted attention to us. I showed up at the location, which looks like a large abandoned warehouse at the end of an old country road. My first thought was, this can't be right, but... Then someone in the same uniform as me shows up out of nowhere. I never saw where they came from, and personally, I'd swear on a stack of Bibles that they just appeared out of thin air. But anyway, this large guy walks up to my truck and checks my ID, and instructs me to drive up to the building, and turn my lights off, and follow the arrows. Now it's like 9 at night and it's very dark out, so I initially want to question this man about turning my lights off and how I'm supposed to follow anything in near complete darkness. But before I can, he disappears again. Rather than argue with thin air, I proceed forward, and just before I get to the building, I turn off my headlights. Just as soon as I do, a large red arrow suddenly flashes up in front of me. I swear, I must be going crazy. That arrow was not there a second ago, and that I'm sure of. I follow the arrow to the corner of a warehouse-looking building, and see a square illuminated on the ground, and another arrow pointing at it. I guess I'm supposed to park here. I stop my truck and kill the engine. I grab my lunchbox, and just as I'm about to open the door and get out, the square under my truck gets brighter, to the point where I cannot see anything past my hood anymore. As soon as it started, it quit, and darkness took over once more. Freaking out and trying to will my eyesight to readjust to the darkness, I look around. This is definitely not the same spot I had just stopped my truck. All of a sudden, there were other vehicles all around mine, like a normal parking lot. There was a sign in front of my truck with just a set of numbers on it, 924. I willed myself to find those three numbers so I could find my truck if things kept up this weird trend. As soon as I stepped foot out of my truck, two more men came from the far side of the magical parking lot to greet me. Nervous and very confused, I tried to extend my hand and introduce myself. As soon as I did, the man on the right side shouted at me, No names! It's too dangerous here for names. I'm 794, and he's 551. Um, what did he mean by it's too dangerous here for names? What the hell did I get myself into? But before I can get too far into my internal monologue, 794 grabs me and says, 387's gonna want to meet you. Great, more freaking numbers to remember on top of my parking space. The two guys lead me into a large plush office where a woman was sitting behind a desk and appeared to be waiting for me. She stood up at my entrance and shook my hand and said she was 387. She said she was in charge of this site and any questions or concerns I should have, I should bring them up to her. I thanked her and said I would. I then asked her, why does everybody use numbers instead of names here? She informed me that the kind of inmates that were housed at this site are so dangerous that if they got any piece of personal information about you, it could be the end of you, your family, your whole gene pool. This woman's screwing with me, I thought, playing a joke on the new guy. I started laughing at this, but then I quickly realized that 387, 551, and 794 weren't laughing at all, and actually looked kinda pissed that I was. 
so I quickly bit my tongue and shut up. 387 then went on to explain that the site is a government black site and doesn't exist as far as anyone is concerned, and that I may never, ever talk about it. She tells me that my new identity is 924, and then sends me out with 794 as my FTO. 794 leads me out of what he calls the East Block. He walks me into the officer station and shows me some of the pod controls, and the emergency equipment, and the radios. All pretty routine stuff if I'm being perfectly honest, but that's when I notice. The pod control panel doesn't have any control switches to open or shut any of the cell doors. I ask 794 about that, and he informs me. But that's because we don't open the cells. Ever. We don't open the cells? Ever? I what a weird prison. How do you send them down for sick call, or how do they get visits, or how do they make phone calls? Remember, now, I just came from a normal prison. I'm a noob to the mess I just landed in. 794 explains that our inmates don't get any of those things, and it's best that way. So, belaying my constant questions about what the hell is going on here, he decides to take me out on the tier for count. Count is something I understand. I, I can do count. But being the rookie, 794 goes with me and shadows my every step. He gives me a clipboard with a roster of names and cell locations, and off I go up the tier. The very first cell I approach, I'm reminded, don't open the cell. I check my roster and see cell 111B houses an inmate named Joe. There's no last name, just Joe. So I look in the cell, but I see a woman, and she's crying and begging 794 for help and to let her out. I look to him for answers, but all he does is reach out with a high-voltage taser and zap the woman. Before I can voice my anger with his uncalled-for response, I hear bones cracking. I turn back to Joe's cell, and the woman who was there before looks like her skin is melting away and she's growing by about two feet. Until it all stops, and before my eyes stands my father staring at me. Sensing my confusion, and I'm guessing assuming I was going to do or say something incredibly dangerous and stupid, 794 dragged me away and back to the officer station. When I finally regained myself, he explained to me that Joe is a shape-shifting telepath from an alternate dimension, and his only reason for existing is to get close to humans and manipulate their feelings and suck out their life force to sustain his own. 794 then tells me that Joe is nothing compared to what else they house there. Of that piece of information, I soon learn is a grave understatement. Apparently, this whole site's existence and purpose is to capture and contain creatures and beings deemed too dangerous by the organization to coexist with humans. These beings come here through wormholes and apparently most can blend seamlessly with humanity and cause little disruption in day-to-day -day life, but there are the select few that live for chaos and discord, and it's our job to minimize them and keep them hidden. Humanity can never know is the motto posted everywhere in the facility. Honestly, after years of seeing it every time I turn a corner or enter a room, I'm sick and tired of it. Personally, I believe in the Freedom of Information Act, and the public needs to know about these kind of places. And yes, I said places. There's a lot of them out there. But the reason I tell you this is not so much to blow the lid off of my employer and expose the world to the secrets of a few black sites, no. I'm here because a few days ago, we had a containment anomaly. One of our more vicious and dangerous prisoners escaped, and frankly, we can't find him. Not for lack of trying, but this one has a list of skills and abilities that make him very difficult to track. We call him Father, only because all the other inmates seem to worship him. We had to keep him in a wing all by himself, because every time he was housed near others, they would get more violent and agitated and dangerous to deal with. So the organization built a whole wing just for him. But the day we were scheduled to move farther, something went wrong. We had a power surge and lost a few control panels, which normally isn't too big a deal because we have fast boot backup generators that get us back online pretty quickly. But for some reason this day, the generators didn't come up like they're supposed to, and all the panels stayed down for too long, and a few containment cells opened by mistake. We managed to recapture all the escapees with minimal damage, that is, all but father. According to officers on his tier and CCTV tapes, as soon as his door opened, he just vanished. And that's particularly discomforting, because invisibility isn't even known on his list of known abilities. And we keep very detailed lists of all of our inmates' powers and abilities. So I'm here, trying to warn the world, give you the heads up your government should. 
Here's everything we know about father. He normally stands about six feet tall, but can make himself taller or shorter based on his intentions at that moment, but never more than a few inches. His hair color varies with each person who sees him. So stay in pairs with people you know and trust and ask of everyone what hair color they see. If it's not the same color you see, run. He has the abilities we know of to read minds, teleport, adjust his appearance to be the most attractive version of himself to whoever looks at him, will draw people to him with charm and charisma. Oh, and let's not forget, we now know he can become invisible. From what we know about Father, he came to Earth from another parallel dimension that he destroyed and intended to do the same here. He begins by gaining a following, then moving into seats of power and control before attempting to become a world leader of some sort, with the ability to control whole governments and military personnel. Then he tries to start wars of a massive scale and use weapons of mass destruction to decimate whole planets before moving on to his next victim. If you or anyone you know happens to spot someone fitting this description, do not under any circumstances approach. Run away, get to a safe location, and call the authorities. We're working with all local, state, and federal entities, and they will know how to contact us and what to do next. I'm just hoping this message gets out there before Father has too much time to gain a following and get into seats of power. Stay safe, people. Stay safe. Stay safe.